So, let's get started. So the first uh, thing we're going to write down is convection currents. Convection currents occur because of differences in temperature. This is the same idea that hot things go up and cold things go down, but let's apply it to the ocean. Um, here's a picture, couple pictures. Now you don't have to draw this uh, picture, but imagine that this container was full of atoms. Now atoms are always moving around, but if you apply some heat, so I'm going to add a couple flames here. Let's say these are oxygen atoms here. Now, if you apply some heat, then these atoms will start moving around a lot faster and faster and faster because the flames are giving them more energy. Now, this idea of um, hot things moving around, especially moving upwards like this, the atoms are trying to move everywhere, up in every direction, but mostly up, is called convection. Underline this word in your notes. Convection is when um, the differences in temperature make things move around. Now let's apply this idea of convection to the oceans and the whole planet. So the sun, remember, we talked about this, hits the middle or the equator more directly. So it makes the water here warmer. The warm water starts moving in all directions, but mostly starts moving upwards. Now the north and the south pole, they have colder water. So that want colder water gets pushed around. This colder water gets pushed around, eventually it gets to the equator. Once it gets to the equator, then it warms up again and it starts cycling. And the uh, cycle continues. This is called a convection current. And it started because the middle water or the equator water is hotter than the water at the poles. Because the water here in the North Pole is colder, and the water here in the South Pole is colder, but the water here in the equator is hotter. That causes that movement, that current to form. Go ahead and develop a question around that idea. Pause the video or rewind it if you need to. For number two, ocean currents transport minerals, gases, and heat to the rest of the world. If not, the oceans would be um, full of uh, heat in one place and they would be colder in other places. And um, that's still true, but some of the minerals and the, uh, the heat is transported to other places that affect the weather and the temperature. So let's look at this picture to understand that idea a little bit better. So, in the brain pop we saw that here, for example, I'm making an X, here's Canada. Canada is a lot colder, and I'm going to make a purple X here. Let's say London and uh, Spain. Now, usually the rule is, I'm going to use a gray line here, that wherever you are, let's say in the equator, you're at the warmest part of the Earth. And if you're at the same distance, it should be about the same temperature because the same amount of sun hits there. But that black X, or Canada, and then compared to the purple X, which is, let's say, Spain, is at different temperatures. And the reason why that is is because of a global conveyor belt, which is this thing here. The global conveyor, uh, conveyor belt transports heat very slowly in the oceans underneath. And uh, on this huge um, uh, current of water usually travels underneath the oceans and it brings heat to different parts. So, uh, Spain is a lot warmer because this uh, uh, section here is hotter. It's bringing heat from the equator up to the closer to the North Pole and it makes the whole area, this whole section over here, a lot warmer. So the global conveyor belt transports heat, uh, transports minerals and gases, and it's one of the biggest currents in the whole world. Go ahead and make a question about um, this uh, point, and then go ahead and write a three-sentence summary and one advanced question. All right, have a good day.